Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game three of Team Liquid versus Evil Geniuses of the upper bracket of the We Play. Of course, winner moves on, loser gets dropped down to the lower bracket, and boy, last game we saw a Slark. And how cool is it to give away the premier quote unquote best hero in the entire game to the enemy? Say, have it for first pick. We got a Slark counter pick. I mean, that is just absolutely amazing. Let's see how the draft is going to progress. This game, when Evil Geniuses will be banning Skyrim Mage once again. Of course, I'm joined by Merlini himself. Merlini, how are you doing? How are you doing? That was that was a great game to watch. Very, very close up until the very end. And one of the LGDN players put it quite nicely. Nice Magnus, MSS. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, felt, I felt somewhat bad for Demon. Like... I don't think he was been playing poorly in this uh, two games so far. It's just that Team Liquid has been so on top of him every time. We knew it's going to be hard for him to drop the RP because Clockwork, Rocket Flare cancels Blink, the Cox, you have to be careful when you're blinking into it. And it looks like Evil Geniuses is presented to pick up the bat first again. If Evil Geniuses don't pick up the bat because in fear of a slot counter perhaps, then Team Liquid will be more than happy to pick it up himself. So I feel like this is a win-win situation for TL. I think if they pick bad, they should just ban Slark in the second phase. Clearly, they don't know how to deal with Slark effectively. And I think, I mean, they really need to make good use of the bad pick. Back got a 23-minute blink and really just didn't do anything for the majority of the game. And in order to utilize your first pick to, uh, like, the extent that we usually see bad riders play, you just need to have, a, like, an easy lane, a relatively easy start. start and Slark apparently won't allow that. Uh, there are still Wisp, too, though. And we haven't seen Wisp in a while, but he is not banned. Uh, Evil Genius is opting to ban Skywrath Mage and Clockwork, and Team Liquid opting to ban Magnus and the Lifestealer. So, still very imbalanced heroes left, most notably Wisp and Batrider. Yeah, I want to say that every time I've seen uh, Evil Geniuses play their Wisp Sven combo, and I want to say it's like four or five games, they have not lost a game at all with that combo. Uh, and I think it's most of the time against Team Liquid as well. It's uh, Jail on the Wisp and Fear on the Sven himself, and they just. Every Fear is like just an insane carry. He just gets these huge crits. I mean, even bigger than JL's uh, PA crits from last game, which were quite impressive. But they're going to go back to bat one more time. And of course, we expect the bat on one of Silence. There is a possibility that he just straight up goes mid. One of the ways that I think um, another team dealt with, quote unquote, dealt with the Slark was they did musical lane switches all day long, right? In that crazy Slark game that we first casted. Maybe that's a way because nobody had farmed that game. It was kind of all just up tempo, lane remaining. switch, counter ganks all day. And maybe if Slark doesn't get that quick, Five for example, face boot or treads, he might not be as effective as a hero. But to be fair, Slark is also one of the less item dependent hero uh, in the early phase of the game. Mm, I agree with you there, and pretty much all you need is like magic stick, and sure, if you yeah. get like tons of magic charges from Batrider, he's still gonna be a pretty good problem, pretty big problem. So Team Liquid, I think you take the other imbalance hero left in the pool, EO, formerly known as Wisp. I call him and 10. Keeper. Uh, Keeper of Light and Wisp is gonna be some sick mana region uh, for, for anybody, so that's gonna open up, for example, Team Liquid to pick up a Swarm if that's what they want, and Korok plays it just fine. Uh, Korok heroes are, are doing a lot of work today, and let's see which one exactly he'll be picked uh, by TC. Yeah, I feel like they should just ban out, like, Rubik, which MSS has just been, like, dominating with today, and just ban out Slark. Um, like, usually we see, like, the same bans over and over, but you really need to cater it to the team that you're playing against. And Team Liquid, like, makes a great use out of those two heroes. MSS stole those two RPs, completely changed the game around, and Slark just caused so many problems for Bat, and doesn't really look like they have a good solution to it. So my suggestion to them, just ban those heroes, and then stick with what you know. Or another way to deal with it is take the uh, Rubik for himself, which is what EG just did. I'm not exactly sure whether Team Liquid will go into the Slark. Um, the two times we have seen them play it, they always gave Slark to Korok, and I think another big piece of the puzzle is TC's Life Stealer because it gives you those insane mid game ganks. You infest into a Slark and he just jumps out of nowhere, and whoever they see is instantly dead. I wonder if Slark himself will have the same ganking potential. I, I doubt it. I, I think he's a strong hero, but I don't think he could burst you down with, without the help of another. So maybe Five if Team Liquid remaining. still wants Slark, they might have to pick up a Nature's Prophet or some sort of another kind of AoE global kind of ganker. We'll see what, what the case is if they want to still go to Slark. It's going to be Boba's Darkstair. And even though they dropped game one, Boba had a very, very farm Darkstair. I think he was leading his team network for the most part of the game. And uh, mm. so far, so good. 
yeah, I think he still played very well, even though they did drop the first game. So, uh, second ban phase underway. It looks like both team is liking a very hard carry. The last game we saw PA, we saw Nix, and we saw uh, Slark. Slark. Slark's not a really hard carry. He's definitely not in the one role, but he does still do pretty good physical damage late game. So, maybe we can see some more exciting ones. So, Evil Genius is immediately banning out the CK, not wanting to deal with that EO-CK combo. Yeah, there's also the Tiny, which I do leave... Was it Team Liquid that used it way back when? Uh, well, a lot of teams have been using Tiny Wisp for the longest time. There's a possibility of Ricky, as there's a decent combo there as well. But Wisp Slark is something that we have not seen yet. <laughs> and I, I imagine that works just fine. Yeah, it's actually uh, fairly unusual to pick a Chen versus a... Like Chen this early versus a Keeper Light, just because Keeper Light just like owes pushes, like just dominates them. And Chen's gonna be a liability later with the Wisp ganks too, depending on who they combo it with, uh, of course. So Team Liquid still taking their sweet time for their second hand, about to dip into the reserve time. Yeah, one thing I do want to point out about the way that Fluff and stuff has been pretty spectacular in Keeper of Light play lately. Uh, most of the time, Keeper of Light has this bad rep of, you know, being that hero that stands behind a tower with blinding light and illuminate ready and just slows down pushes, being the huge annoyance factor that he is. With Team Liquid, how offensive they like to play and how aggressive they like to play, Fluff and Sub use Recall offensively and just, he, he roams all over the map and it's like a teleport station for the rest of the team to come through. And of course, not only is he teleporting Darkseer and whatever else they pick in, they, they have the Wisp back up, so look towards Team Liquid if they find themselves in an early game lead to press their lead and using Keeper of Light as a big uh, mechanism to do so. Uh, but a little more later on that, it's going to be a Gyro Ban for EG and then it's going to be Nature's Prophet and a Juggernaut here for Team Liquid. Yeah, so we see Team Liquid ban out both of the heroes that are almost immune to Wisp Ganks. If they ever get in trouble, you just spin TP or Rage TP. So looks like whatever uh, carry Evil Geniuses is going to have to deal with, unless it's an anti-mage who can blink out of it, is going to be very vulnerable to the Wisp, whatever it may be, Ganks. Yeah, Blink Dagger overall is a, is a very good item again. And, and Force Staff as well, because you get that two-second notification on the minimap. So generally that is enough time for you to quickly react and blink out. And... Unless you have some crazy sick uh, combo with the Wisp, generally they don't get that chase off. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, Puck's gonna get the ban out, so again, targeting one of Korok's mid hero. So we, we have no idea whether this bat is gonna go mid. We have no idea whether Slark's gonna get picked. Again, it doesn't look like it so far, although that's always on the platter. And the bigger question for me again is, what is EG's carry here? Uh, some, of the, some of the game's most popular carries banned out already, Gyrocopter for example, the Lifestealer, and Juggernaut was a, was a carry that Evil Five Geniuses like to dip remaining. into, uh, is also banned out. You were talking about the Anti-Mage and how he's sort of immune to the Wisp Bank, and I think he's a fine pickup here. Yeah, they could also use the Luna and try and really make use of their Chen and Luna and just take down a lot of early towers, but again, that is going to be very, very difficult for us to keep the light. Uh, what other carries are left in the pool? I mean, there's Sven for Liquid, as well as a Tiny. Uh, there's just not really too many carries left. Yeah, and, and both PA. those yeah, and both those carries are fine, but Napalm against a melee hero is just, it's tough. So there's a lot of for Team Liquid to think about as well. One thing I like to see for, for Evil Genius to pick up, ooh, it's going to be a Beastmaster. That's going to give them yet another way to disable... Uh, whoever Wisp's partner is, and that's actually a very, very smart way to deal about it. Generally, you're dumping basically two heroes farm, two heroes offensive capability into Wisp's partner, and having both ways to shut him down now, Lasso and, and a bad, right, or Beastmaster Ultimate, just means that Wisp and his partner is not going to do anything in these team fights. Mm. So, most likely be a Beastmaster solo mid, although... It's a I demon mean, Beastmaster. Sure. Yeah, I, I, would, I hope so. Yeah. But, it looks like they're... No more mag this game for him. No, well, it's it's been banned out and it's gonna be Dragonite, Dragonite. once again. So I think Dragonite's gonna get a little bit of better help this game. You were talking about the first time when we saw Dragonite being picked up. You're talking about the old school MYM days of you know old school in uh in power, old school the uh bloodlust from the ogre, and then just dumping all these steroid passives onto him. Well what's <laughs> That's the same thing, sort of. It gives them a little bit more defensive capability with O charge, but more importantly, the attack Drow speed. Ranger. And it's gonna be a Drow Ranger coming from Evil Geniuses. Oh, what a so push threat. Push threat it is. Yeah. Although not with Luna, with Drow instead. How, cool. imp how important is Silence in this game? Uh, generally, I feel like that's one of her more oh, underrated yeah. capability. Silence crushes Darkseer. If you yeah. can get it off, like, 
Wow, well, Silence is just an incredible skill and highly underrated. Yep, and of course, if you drop it on, let's say, the Dragonite that's heaping in or, or Keeper of Light that's per perhaps next to you, they're basically seconds. useless here. I mean, that's one of the longer duration silences in the game. Big AoE silence as well. Five perhaps Team Liquid, remaining. a little bit more re about this throw. Uh, and of course, generally you say, oh, Drow, easily pick her off. You, you blink on top of her face and, and jump on her. But look at how much defense that she's going to get from just Chen creeps, from the sent back, from the mech, as well as Beastmaster Roar. There's just so many ways to protect that Drow. And whoever is playing it, I imagine it's going to be fair. Remaining. If he has good enough mo uh, position, it's going to be a cinch in terms of surviving and dealing assassin. damage backwards. It's going to be a Korok Templar Assassin in this game. Mm, Templar Assassin. Decent versus Beast Bastard, and it, again, it's like one of those uh, early early mid heroes that they really need. And that meld will really help Dragonite do the damage that he needs to do. Again, Dragonite, uh, I don't know. I feel like they could have picked like a better, better hero, like more AoE to deal with the push, just because AoE is just like usually king. If you can uh, hit anyone with, like, for example, if they picked uh, Tiny, if you vacuum them into a stun toss combo, that's infinitely more devastating than like a Dragonite with his like puny breath of fire until he is level 16. But that's gonna be a very long time coming and may not even happen this game given the early game uh, force that Evil Genius has picked. I mean, he throws out Frost Epicenter level 16. How can you deny that? <laughs> Especially with vacuum <laughs> stuff, it's pretty sick. Uh, I think that the key spell, another key spell for Keeper of Light is going to be Five Blinding Light. Droinger, sure, she's a BKB hero. I wonder if she's going to get that BKB. Uh, it's always a good item to get, especially against this kind of offensive power from Team Liquid. But she might actually skip it for, let's say, more damage. But that's that's uh, something to Everybody be discussed a it. lot later on. Let's introduce both teams as... Ooh, this is a... What is this courier? Look at this EG courier. I've never seen this one before. The Kupu. Oh, that's the the Primoth. The Primoth. Mm. Okay. All right. In any case, EG Bambo is going to be playing the Vat Rider. Hopefully, he can redeem himself. He's not going to have Slark to deal with this game, though. Fear is going to be playing the Rubik. Uh, Jail on the Drill Ranger. And Beatus on the Chen. And last but not least, it's going to be Demon playing mid. I got to say... Before we introduce this team, like a demon has one of the sexiest Beastmaster. He's the only Beastmaster I know that just straight up goes all these crazy builds. I've seen him max Call of the Wild by 7. And of course, you know, the standard maxing access. He, he understands this hero, I want to say, a lot better than most other Beastmaster player out there. So on the other side of the server, we see uh, TC on the Dragon Knight. Looks like he will be solo mid instead of the TA. Quite unusual. Showtime. We see Korok on TA top. Uh, baby set by stand-in Mojo Storm Stout on the Wisp, our Rubik champion from last game. And then we see Fluff on, uh, looks like Support Keeper of the Light on bottom lane, as well as Boba on Darkseer. So it looks like they are doing a very unusual two-on-one, especially with TA not mid. So very unconventional lanes from Team Liquid. Is there any, like, huge benefit you, you give TA if she gets, like, early protected design. farm like this? I mean, the way I see it, she gets an early blink, but... She she gets that blink just by laning mid anyways because how dominant her last hitting capability is. Any any kind of extra reason for Team Liquid to lane her as a safe farm? I imagine Dragonite would appreciate any kind of safe farm that he gets on the top. I think what they wanted to do is dodge the bat lane so that TA just doesn't get manhandled by bat. But little did they know that Bambo was actually scheduled uh, for this top off lane because TA really needs a good start in order to be effective in the mid game. She's not one of those heroes that can come back uh, very, very easily unless she gets some like easy kills from a TP tower dive. But regardless, uh, she really does need an easy time and pairing being paired up versus Bat is not easy by any means. So it looks like uh, it, it will be Beastmaster paired up versus TC as Dragonite in middle. Yeah, and that's mostly going to be a wash. Really, we're not going to see too many kills. Although, with that said, there's a lot of roaming support, especially with a Chen coming in. Uh, if it gets a, a pretty good center stomp or something like that, then they might uh, actually get that kill on Dragonite out mid. On the bot lane, you can see that Beatus already has a, has a Furbok in position. There is Surge available, and there's really no true stun in this lane. Yeah, he's going to Surge right back out into the comforts of Beatus' his bosom. But it uh, looks like Creep is not in there to cut him off. Yeah, him already getting two and a half is a pretty big win for him already, though. Yeah, and this is uh, generally the matchup that you, you expect from Darkseer and Chen. Chen, great hero once he gets the creep, but you don't get the creep until Darkseer gets two. So it's not exactly a, a good way to deal with the Darkseer in the lane. But the other lane we haven't talked about too much is Korok on top, and he is last hitting like a king, as you imagine, getting free farm against nobody with Refraction. Eight and four is the CS, uh, the eight being the more important value there. And of course, Demon, as well as Dragonite on the mid lane will be bottle crawling. 
So again, we see quite a passive early game. Even in the triple versus triple game uh, that we saw with the PA, still very passive, very few kills early. And I expect this game to be no different. Again, just a lot of creep stacking going on from both teams. And both carries just farming it up right now. Uh, three heroes with 11 last hits right now. TA, Drow Ranger, and the Beastmaster. So the one thing that we generally talk about is how quickly Batrider farms his Blink Dagger in the jungle. He's gone for the bottle build, and it's going to be somewhat effective since they could bottle crawl twice for the same player, uh, and they're doing just that. But the other thing, let's not forget, is that Wisp needs a 6, and generally he is pressure heavily, but he's going to help have, have the help of Luminate as well as Spirits to actually get this quick 6. And I guess both teams making these strategic trades. Who do you think it favors, a quick Wisp 6 or a quick Blink Dagger on back? I think a quick Wisp 6 will do more for them, especially since Bat is very limited by the amount of space he can farm with the Chen in the jungle. Like, Wisp and uh, Keeper Light like, can't farm all five spots that quickly just because it's Wisp and Coddle. They aren't the best junglers in the world. But uh, Bat Rider and Chen, those those guys are like awesome junglers, and being able to only do two uh, camps if you're Bat Rider and only three for Chen really does limit your farm, especially when you have fear on Rubik Pulia. So they have. Three heroes sharing the jungle, and they're already two good jungle heroes to begin with for bottom lane. And in top jungle, we have two heroes that are not the greatest at jungling, and I, th I think this is just better for um, Liquid. Well, EG will be making that first smoke against TC, and really they need to actually get T uh, Fairy in position to get that lift and follow up with the troll, and basically right click, right click. Now, there is a ton of armor on that Dragon Knight 7 to be exact. He has the boots. And perhaps he is expecting the gang to come in. You can see that he's playing somewhat passively, yeah. And right now, a ton of time being wasted by EG. They're going to try to stop, maybe rotate around. Uh, you can see that right now, Bamboo also done, getting a ton of level on farm by taking that triple stack in the, in the jungle right now. Yep, so looking at the XP graph, it is a little bit in favor of Dire just because these two heroes uh, are just completely wasting their time. Unless they get early first, but TC is out of mana and he has boots. Ooh, he, he might be dead. Oh, where's the lift? Oh, no movement speed. Bo oh, there's boots actually on fear. I'm surprised they didn't get the kill. Dragonite, though, 340 himself, uh, will be able to get away from that one. So like you said, unless they get that kill, they're going to be falling a little bit behind in terms of EXP. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Demon, though, does snag that double damage from Fluff's Deny. Very good awareness from TC. Notice that he was like close to the bottom side of the ramp, and a lot of players are just like don't really watch over positioning that much. But TC very very careful and able to run away as soon as he sees the Rubik because of his uh, really awesome positioning. Jo on the bot lane harassing Boba away. Jo though leading in terms of CS. Her base damage is absolutely insane as Draw Ranger, and uh, meanwhile, Darkseer's only got ten, so you can't expect too much out of Darkseer, especially to the awesome deny power of Draw. Yeah, we can expect uh, Chen to probably try to rotate bottom very soon, especially with his early Ring of Basilius pickup on Draw Ranger instead of a typical Trez first or perhaps even Midas. I think that means that they're going to try and pressure this tower very early, especially since it's just a solo Darkseer. And I imagine that uh, Keeper of Light will get ready to TP, uh, and maybe help out that push a little bit if that's going to be the case. But still, both of them is getting a ton of level in the jungle right now. Level 4 and Fluff, level 3 and a half. Back in the mid lane here, TC in a little bit of trouble. Double damage is doing a ton of work. Beastmaster Roar has been already used, and, and that 7 armor was not enough for the Dragonite to withstand a last hit from Vetus. Vetus gets the first one. I'm sure Demon would have loved that one, but more importantly, they got the kill. And they're going to pressure this tier 1 tower a little bit. I don't think they'll bring it down, but... Any free damage you get is any free damage uh, that you, you want on, on EG side. So Korog has actually opted for a Midas, a very unusual TA build, but he is getting free form at top, so why not? So he will have 38 last hits, 38 and 19, but again, he is uncontested in the top lane just because Batrider has been jungling this whole entire time. So under 6 minute Midas, pretty good timing for him. Yeah, I mean, the experience is definitely going to help us. Well, I guess instead of ganking his way to it for some big items, he's going to farm his way for some big item. The issue with, in my opinion, with most TA is that, sure, she's a great hero killer in the kind of mid-game phase, but as soon as everybody starts clumping apart, uh, clumping together, he's really not as effective as a hero. It's going to provide a little bit more utility with things like traps and whatnot, but her burst damage, she's not going to kill things like Beastmaster or Batrider, especially not through that Chen, so... I'm really questioning whether this is going to work out, and we'll have to wait and see for that to happen. 
Yeah, I'm definitely a little bit wary about that too. Even if he gets like BKB, there's still Roar that goes through it. There's still all the right click from Drow and the champ creeps that goes through it. Oh, it looks like MS is in trouble. It should be okay. The trap's gonna fly through though. And now Korok, oh, they didn't apply that stun. And MSS should be very careful. He does have the early level overcharge. Nice, uh, nice flame break's gonna bounce everybody aside. The blobs are flying in. Another trap comes through. And Bamboo is very, very tanky. But Firefly's gonna run out in the first blood. No, the second kill is gonna get drawn here by Korok. Korok running towards Fear. He wants that kill. And the attack speed of that might is actually doing some early game work. The toss back, the trap is gonna fly through, and that's yet another kill. That's gonna be Demon uh, TPing in. Does he have the roar? Yes, he does. Am, oh no, the long TP. And look at the nice tether here from MSS. Two fluff and stuff. And they're gonna be fine to jungle another day. I have no idea why Fear like dragged him into the tower instead of a wait, but I think he was dead either way. So nice, some nice traps there by TA. And I guess putting in her safely gives her like a lot more room to chase. Usually, if you dive that far mid, you have to. Oh, TC looks like he's in trouble. Yeah, speaking of chase here, unfortunately, Batrider doesn't have that flaming last. So I think what they were looking for there was a flame break push back into those centaur stomps, and and that didn't work out. And also on the top, maybe they they want to toss him back, uh, maybe because Demon said, "All right, I'm TPing in, toss him back, let me get the roar off." Unfortunately, that was the second TP, so it really took a long while, and it didn't work out there either. But yeah, TC right now surviving the onslaught that's thrown to him in the mid lane. He's level eight almost. His farm is not exactly too spectacular. And really, the only person that really has insane farm is the TA and, and JL. But look at JL against Boba. Boba, one more hit away, and will it get the last hit? Yes, he will. Getting a solo kill against the Dark Sphere. I didn't expect that at all, but hey, JL with the big deeps. He's hitting for like 130 right now. That's insane. Eight minutes in. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to take an easy tower mid, and JL will be putting pressure on the... Tower bond too, so first tower goes to EG. Yeah, and let's get out on goalie. It's gonna be about a thousand goalie. It's not, not exactly a huge lead, considering that again, Liquid is doing a ton of jungling with the two supports. Experience lead, a little bit of a two to dire advantage, more towards that jungle side. And so far, so good here for Team Liquid, despite losing some tower. A little bit bottle crawling up top on Templar Assassin. I imagine it's gonna be a quick treads upgrade. Uh, it seems like it. And then we're gonna see some kind of big mid game items in the form of a blink, perhaps, or a big crits. We'll see. No, it's gonna go straight up uh, stats build. It's gonna be Bracer into Treads, I imagine. Yep, and this was uh, it's almost level six, level five and a half now. So we should expect him and I don't know Korok or maybe TC. I'm not really sure who's gonna be uh, the Wiss partner in crime. But again, we should start seeing some relocate ganks pretty soon. Yeah, I, I think Korok perhaps is the the better partner here. A ton of burst damage. And remember that he has that early level of overcharge, so they could basically dive just about anybody, and they need to dive this Drow. Drow working on this bot tower, and they will get a demon. Does he have the roar? I, I'm very surprised that he did not roar straight out on Boba. I think Boba would have been dead right there, but... Well, they got the yeah, tier 1. So and there's no response here from Team Look. It looks like they're trying to group up for that tier 1 push up top, but... Is it going to be a Roshian? One of the earliest Roshian. And you could do this with Chen Creeps tanking and the big dam from J.O. Jail, is he going for Helm or is he going for straight up Mask of Men? I would assume HOD. I think uh, I think that Mask of Men is way too risky of a choice, especially considering the burst that um, the burst that TA can provide and the mobility of Wiz. But this this Roshan is just dropping for free, so yeah. Liquid giving up a lot of early game. The Radiant lost the top tower. Gonna write that one down, so we'll be like five minutes later. Do they still have the agents? Something like that. Uh, Team Liquid uh, does get a, a tier one answer back on on the top lane, but I don't think I don't think the Radiant team even cares about that tier one, especially one of the Radiant least important tier one towers. Tower Looks like they're gonna just straight push now. the mid lane. Uh, Beastmaster Roar drop be really deep behind the tower. Boba should be able to survive, especially with the help of Blinding Light. So using one of the more important that ultimates. But like you man. predicted during the draft stage, we're gonna see some big early push coming out from AG. And I think perhaps even Team Liquid was a little bit blindsided, blindsided about how quickly this one came. They just got level 6 with the Wisp, and generally you say, alright, free pickoffs, but you can't freely pick off people if they're all grouped up like this. Yep, and this Inner Beast aura plus uh, Precision aura, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of damage. With Chen Creeps, that's like massive amounts of push potential, and Liquid just does not seem to be in the position to defend any of these with Keep the Light just 
not really there to spam illuminate no one really there to contest this push in no traps in there for vision i i mean i think they're probably just waiting for level six with and he is fighting level six but again they have already backed off no one really in imminent danger from that relocate gank. Yeah, Jo, uh, he's instead of upgrading his lifestyle item, he's gonna go straight Yasha, which is not bad. It gives you that necessary movement speed. Uh, I, I think when when Dro was played two three years ago, I think was randomly picked up by some uh, European teams. Loves to go for that um, Yasha into a BKB build. We'll see if it's gonna be going for the exact same thing here, or if he's gonna upgrade it straight into a Mansa or something else. We'll see. Yeah, Jerry, uh, Jail looking very pretty on his farm right now. His net worth is just slightly below TA, even with that Radiant two tower and Roshan advantage. Yeah, here comes the push on the mid lane, uh, but here comes the Luminate to defend it as well. There is no blink on Bambo, 500 go away, but the Centaur creep, the Beastmaster in front, Glyph is going to get forced out. And it's really tough for Fluff and stuff to actually find the angle to find those Illuminate. And that's, that's something that you don't hear too often because you know, Luma could easily defend tower, but not when there's things like Batrider flying from the left and Demon coming in from the right. And they are going to get the tower despite the Luminate defense. They just can't really stop this right now. Yep, and we have not seen a Wisp use a relocate yet. Boba's dead. Beastmaster Ward canceled that TP. JL's going to get the kill. There's a relocate, and it's going to come in a very awkward angle. MSS? Uh-oh. Um, I think he's gonna survive, <laughs> but oh, maybe not. Jail's gaining on him quite quick. Couple more shots, he's barely gonna make it out. Using the uh, overcharge to give himself a little bit of survivability, but maybe a, a big mis miscommunication. Maybe Croc said, "Man, we're not gonna get the kill. Don't don't hit me, man. Just just don't get me killed." Maybe yeah, and I wonder what uh, MTA is going to go for next. Is she going to go for a blink so she can pick up a couple of weak heroes? Or is she just going to go drums, perhaps Manta, or even Dezo for more damage, survivability, and utility? I think blink is not bad, especially the fact that it gives you that very infinite initial stun with the tether. So even if you don't teleport right on top of them, the blink gives you the stun, what's we catch up, and, and you just right click away. She's sitting at 2000 gold. Again, still no true indication, has not purchased anything. But speaking of blink, Bambo's got his, and last game he got what, a 20 minute blink? This one, a lot more acceptable at 13, 14 minutes, and that's gonna make the tier 2 tower pushes up on top a lot easier, but I do believe Fear might be in a little bit trouble up here. Double Trap is under him, and if he's not careful, he's gonna get picked off. Yeah, and the, yeah, they're just helping this bat out a lot more, especially with those early towers. Having 10 minute earlier blink than last game, is, oh, he's already... Yeah, he's, he's got it. He's fire flying up yeah. top, trying to find a kill. But Team Liquid, the entire team is smoked up. Maybe trying to bait the Quora uh, whistle a little bit. Do they have that instant initiation? That's one of their downfall, in my opinion, in game number one. Flame Lasso initiation finds Fluff and stuff behind the tower. He gets melted in less than one two seconds. But it looks like Team Liquid won't still fight this. Mech's already used. They want to focus on Jail, and that's all their damage. The Hand of God, where is it? It's not there. Oh, it has Aegis. So they're going to fight for this another time. But I don't think the dive is there. Yeah, they don't have the dive anymore. Team Liquid still trying to chase him away. And Dragonite should be careful. If he gets lifted, he's dead. He gets lifted up, and Jail's doing a ton of damage output. TC trying to survive that one. He's not going to get it off. Korok's in the middle of the fight. He's trying to burst down Bambo. I don't think he has that burst power. I think Korok's going to go down as well. Jail is on a killing spree. Nobody is actually uh, going to get the kill on him. Bambo blinks into a tether stun. He's looking at the frame break. He's going to have the frame break. And MSS. It's gonna barely survive, but the damage has already been done. Tier 1 tower goes down. Two carries of Team Liquid has already gone down as well. So it really begs the question, is a TA farm, safe lane farm up top really worth it? Because her impact is just not there. Especially all those chain creeps, it blows away all her refraction charges. And allows Drew Ranger just just get the easy kills. I think it would have been okay trade if EG didn't take so many towers. Like Drow, I mean, yeah, sure, she's good with items and uh, whatnot, but I think TA can definitely take her on, but not with this huge gold advantage from one, two, three, four towers on and Roshan. Yeah. And meanwhile, Liquid is only taking one tower down, so that's pretty much three towers worth and Roshan amount of gold. That's just huge amounts of, uh, just huge amounts of gold to their team that Liquid is just inputting to, uh, really difficult to come back from. Yeah, I'm surprised they're only leading by 5,000 go. I say only because they're up by tower, like Merlin pointed out. They're up by a tons of kill. They just won a big team fight. And I guess it's credit to goes to the fact that the Dire uh, is farming decently in terms of here. So as you can see that Korok with the Might is helping you out. He's got the Blink, he's got the Dreads. So this is good as any time to start making those ganks, but 
it's just so hard to do it against Chen. Um, the send back, uh, the hand of God, the mech, it just makes that target that you're going to go for survive long enough uh, and, and for TP support to come in. And it's just so risky to... You make those ganks, and if you lose two heroes when you're ganking, suddenly you're, you're going to lose more towers. You're going to lose more uh, Roshan later on. Speaking of Rosh, he's going to be back in about four minutes. Yeah, I mean... Dude, we rarely see TA not really do too much early game. I think if they want, really wanted a safe lane farmer that just got Midas and farmed for another 20 minutes, they could have been better suited with another Great hero, especially with his lack of aggression. Again, no traps around in Roshan, and just pretty much never visiting the bottom side of the map has been the story of the game for Liquid. Just forced to play in this really passive position, trying to get level 6 on Wisp, and after that, TA just wants to farm. But. 17 minutes in, we see 10 kills, 7 for EG, and 3 for Liquid. TC getting caught out right now. He may be the Dragon Knight, but he's going to get burst down by Jail. Where's the relocate? He's got to come in. They do come in to pick off Chen. That's an important target. Now Jail being focused. He doesn't have Aegis this time. He's low to the earn. He's going to get picked off. Great initiation here by the Diary team. Oh, looks like Fear is going to be low as well. He's going to also go down. Buyback from TC. He gets recall back in the middle of the fight, and they pick off the bat as well. Any casualty aside from TC? Zero. Great, great counter initiation. And I think they're going to get a tier one. Meanwhile, who the hell is this Beastmaster somehow surviving and teleporting back out? They needed that wing big time. And suddenly the kill score is completely even up. Team Liquid's going to try to use this moment in time to get back as much map control as possible. Tier one's going to go down. They're going to go into the enemy jungle, farm a couple camps, ward their jungle off, and that's going to make the subsequent Wisp ganks a lot, a lot easier. There goes Radiance bottom and Drow is just like getting crushed by this guy. I mean, he has more... He had more farm, but what are you going to do against a TA before you have your Manta style? But she is very close to completing it, only just 130 gold away. Yep. Uh, and there's the farming by Team Liquid. Ward's already dropped down by here by Fluff and Stuff. And I gotta say, still good initiation from Fluff and Stuff, but having the recall ability, using it quite offensively in that uh, recall buyback, and Beatus should be very, very careful. There's a big squad of enemies uh, in his jungle. Maybe they're pinging out a little bit of uh, Ward's. Yeah. Is that a gem pickup? That is such an early gem pickup by Demon, really wrestling for the map control back, and all these newly set wards, they're going to waste. Yeah, but it looks like they are setting up for Roshan. It will just be just over a minute until it respawns. And Dragon Knight looks like he's going to same build as last game. Casual Bracer into a Shadow Blade. Yeah, I like that build. Uh, it's not to say that BKB is a poor choice. In fact, I think BKB is great, but it's not going to help against the War and Lasso. It's not going to help against the right clicks. So maybe I, I think he should go for a Shadow Blade and straight into Assault Curious. Give his team a little bit more tank ability. Give himself a lot more needed tank ability. And also, there's always this pressure, it seems like, from the viewers, like, oh, you have a Wisp, you gotta make those ganks. But I feel like one of the more underutilized uh, strategy of Wisp is actually just farming straight up with it. You can see that Korok has never actually been to lane. You talked about how he's not really pressuring the map, but on the same token, he's leading the game in terms of lasses. Look at how far ahead. He's about 40 creep kills, 50 creep kills ahead of the Drill Ranger, who had free farm entirely. Uh, because he has a Wisp around, he is allowed to not actually join the team for any fights, and, and but still be there because of Relocate. So, there, it's a very interesting way to use a Templar Assassin, and it remains to be seen whether it's going to be effective, but so far he's, he's farming great, and he's going to give his team a, a ton of burst damage. If EG is smoked around the Roshan pit though, and I do hear a recall. Yeah, TC doesn't have buy this time. The overcharge is trying to, trying to help him survive, but he's not going to survive. Will he though? He's going to be dropping low. He finally died. MSS is low as well. One more arrow is going to be the death of him. He does go down as well. Two free pickoffs, and I gotta say, somebody give Bambo some Taco Bells because he's been playing spectacularly in this team fight. Just great initiation every single time, finding these picks off pickoffs. And that's going to give them the Roshan that they need. No buyback from TC to remember here, because he used it in the last team fight. Yeah, Bambo just looking a lot more comfortable now that he is early, has his early click. He can actually make a difference in these early team fights. He almost has his four staff completed too, and will definitely have it if they take this Roshan and contest it. Both trying to channel Illuminate, but there is Pipe already popped. Yeah, early Pipe from Demon as well. And of course with the gem, they had just, just no sight at all from the Dire. He's just gonna get taken by bad. Oh no, Korok, he blinks in, trying to pull a Bambo, but unfortunately, he missed just by a hero. He's gonna go down, the relocate's gonna come in with the Dragon Knight. Fair is low, he gotta take down Fair. He's gonna go down, Beatus is dead as well, but the Drill Ranger arrows, it is so much. TC's gonna be dead, he's been dying way too many times. Tether backwards, gonna be the rescue bust out. But at the end of that exchange, it was an Aegis for TC's life. Korok also blinked in to initiate that fight. I think if they were a little bit more coordinated, if the blink came, at the same time that TC came in, 
the fight might have been a little bit better, but at the end of the day, EG put himself even further ahead. They, they didn't even kill the Aegis on Draw Ranger, so it was a huge, huge loss for Team Liquid. Quickly checking out how we're doing in terms of the go here. Only slightly at 2,000 gold lead. I imagine that's going to extend forward as Jail. It's going to farm a little bit more. And at the offense, it feels like it's just been completely halted uh, from the Team Liquid side. And I wonder what they can do in terms of securing the mid-game comeback. We saw how effective it is to jump on Jail and, and kill him, but... That, that window of opportunity, the opportunity to jump on him is now close, at least for the next six minutes. So, what do you think Berlini, like exactly what can Team Liquid do to you to make that comeback? Merlini, I'm not sure if your, your mic's Oh, off. sorry, I was, I was uh, muted for a second. I, I think they really just need to make good use of these Whisk Ganks. I mean, they picked the hero in the first phase, and it really just hasn't done anything. We saw that one gank on bottom, but it was just Wisp by himself. I haven't really seen MSS make really good use of this re relocate as of yet. And because of that, they have they don't have any map control. They really just need to set psionic drops around the map, perhaps like at the ancient spawn and close to Newt's and where Chen may be or Beastmaster and just look for picks there so they can regain some sort of map control, farm the map a little bit more and uh, take down some more towers. Yeah, I mean, right now you see the BKB on Korok. He is ridiculously farmed. Still down by multiple towers, like three, four towers, two Roshan kills, still even with the farm. And that's that's a power of Wisp allowing this jungle all day. And of course, with the Midas. But farm on TA is just not that effective, especially if Bambo catches you out like this. No, Korok is going to get picked up. Relocate back. Relocate back. Not going to be there. MSS uses his ultimate. And they could just camp him straight up and get that kill on. Of course, right now, Wisp is thinking about his life. Uh, he's trying to spend his gold and he's trying to tether back to his ally. Let's see if he's actually going to get that tether off. Oh, tether, tether, tether. Silence on top. GG. Yeah, what a clutch pick by Bambo there. And I course, don't even know how he saw him. Yeah, I don't know. Like, he's he got that Firefly, some OP range. And of course, there's going to be some uh, Illuminate, but it's just not going to do a double buyback. But EG, they, just, they could just back off here, right? Or they keep on pushing. They have the Aegis, so they could still force it. I think they're slowly sieging with those Mantle Illusions. Double tornado uh, from the Chen creeps. Tornado OP. Yeah, man. Yep, no uh, pipe up yet, though. I think they may need to wait for that. Looks like those those wild wings are dead. Yeah. Mech's gonna be used. Pipe's gonna be coming down in just about 30 seconds. Again, if if Jo gets caught, that's completely fine because he has the Aegis, and of course the re-engage is gonna happen. It's gonna allow the Dire to cool down some of the more important. Uh, Ultimates, such as that real quick for a little bit of chase. Backing backwards, he's gonna get stolen, they're gonna focus on Demon. But no, Bambo blinks into the link, he's gonna still get the lasso off. And actually they drag Korok to the low ground where he's, he got the BKB, but he's gonna get focused by 3 or 4. Meanwhile, Jo is doing some work, TC's also coming back out, he gets Ward. Jo is finally dead, but how can you kill him the second time? I really don't think they can. Korok's collapsing on them, and looks like they are gonna turn. Jo's on the run, he's quite low, can you actually get a trap off? And get that last hit. No, they cannot. Nice send back here by Beatus. But surprisingly, Team Liquid defense one more time. Nice push up here by Korok. He needs to blink the low ground. He will blink. The tether stun. Not going to get the cancel on the TP. Bambo is low. He does have the four stab. He's looking to the four stab on the low ground. And meanwhile, looks like J.O. is going to be... Oh, Korok is going to be right back here with the TP back. And look at the frost arrow as well as the silence. Any detection? They know where exactly where he's beat is. Does not have the detection. Korok could blink back out. In fact, he could actually chase if he wanted to do so. Meanwhile, MSS does not have mana or tether target. So he's going to be dead. Back and forth fight here. And I think Korok needs to get the hell out. He blinks straight into Bambo. A flame break is going to burst him back. And the fireflies on top. His extraction charges are all gone. He's also going to get picked off. End of the day, good, good chase. Good recovery by Team Liquid, Radiant but perhaps a little bit of overextension. The send back into Draw Ranger, and he's got a Mask of Madness. I think he just picked it up right then Radiant and there. And I think they're going to get the Melee Rax out of this. Yeah, very, oh, Bat. Bambo is just playing extremely well this game, and really showing why Bat is first pick. That really nice flame break up the cliff, pushing TA up there. That first gank on TA that just really caused her to force her to buy back. I mean, just really great play by Bambo here. And this, these T4s are just dropping so fast. Look at this Mask of Madness with Manta Style and Beastmaster. Oh my goodness. These T4s are just falling. This might just be game. Yeah, they don't have Glyph. The, the drone's fully exposed. They have TA dead for 12 more seconds. I don't think Li Liquid saw this one coming. Towers half down. They, they need Blinding Light right now. They're going to straight up call the GG. Batrider blinks in to provides more distraction. Jail on the back line just right clicking away at Boba. Maybe you could just right click on the throne. But the game is really, really over. The surprise mid game push 
came from Chen as well. Is it fake GG time? I don't think it's fake GG time. It looked pretty close in terms of defending that one. But EG just blindsided everybody with Chen, Draw Ranger, Beastmaster, early game aura push. And that's all she wrote. Yeah, that was ridiculous. A ridiculously swift ending to a game. I thought Liquid was still in it and they could come back, but just one swift push ended it all. Yeah. What a game from EG. It was some spectacular best of three series between these two American juggernauts. And I, I don't I don't think a lot of people expected the swift victory like this in game three or perhaps EG taking the entire series. But again, the scary thing about these tier one teams, they could always take a best of three away from another tier one team. And EG did it in a spectacular fashion. And of course, we're going to have another best of three coming up next. But he's Merlini. I am Luminous. Check him out on his stream. And of course, check me out on my YouTube. But that's it for now. We have, I think, a short break. Let me check on that. No, actually, the next best of three should be coming up right about now. So grab your popcorn, grab your drinks. We'll be back very, very soon. And thank you guys for watching.